today. SEC Chair Gary Gensler says he's disappointed with parts of the Ripple ruling. Coinbase CEO Brian Armstrong gears up to meet with lawmakers. And Coinroots CEO Dave Weisberger breaks down why crypto stocks are outperforming crypto assets. Welcome to CNBC's Crypto World, I'm Tanea McKeel. Major cryptocurrencies were slightly lower today. As of noon Eastern, Bitcoin dipped about 1%, falling just under the $30,000 level. Ether traded just below $1,900. However, Ripple's XRP token rose nearly 3% after a pullback yesterday. Okay, let's talk about the top stories. SEC Chair Gary Gensler says the agency is, quote, disappointed with parts of the recent Ripple court ruling. The judge's decision marked a major blow to the SEC's efforts to regulate the crypto industry by enforcement. Ripple scored a partial victory when a federal judge ruled that it didn't violate securities laws when issuing XRP to retail investors. At an event held by the National Press Club in Washington, D.C., Gensler said the SEC was disappointed with that decision, but at the same time, he said the agency was pleased that the judge agreed Ripple should not have sold XRP directly to institutional investors. Next, Coinbase CEO Brian Armstrong is expected to meet privately with a group of lawmakers in Washington tomorrow morning. The meeting with House Democrats comes as two of the biggest crypto exchanges, Coinbase and Binance, are dealing with lawsuits brought by the SEC for allegedly failing to register their operations with the agency. After last week's XRP ruling, the chief legal officer at Coinbase told CNBC that the crypto exchange's arguments in its legal case against the SEC have now been strengthened. On Capitol Hill, Armstrong also indicated he plans to make remarks on the future of digital asset legislation. We reached out to Coinbase for information about the upcoming meeting, but didn't hear back right away. Finally, last year's crypto meltdowns, like the collapse of FTX, could lead to tougher global oversight of the industry. Yesterday, the G20's Financial Stability Board published its final recommendations for regulators on how to supervise crypto companies and markets, a first for the group. The G20 watchdog warned of broader financial risk if crypto firms are not regulated and noted that its global regulatory framework was influenced by last year's crashes. In fact, the group revised its existing recommendations for stablecoins as a result of the fall of Terra USD and Luna last year. The nine recommendations take into account feedback received during the watchdog's public consultation on the topic and include mandatory disclosures for the crypto industry. All right, on to our main story. The topic of crypto regulation in the U.S. is definitely front and center amid the SEC's lawsuits against exchanges, as well as Senators Lummis and Gillibrand's revamped crypto bill unveiled last week. So Crypto World's Jordan Smith spoke to Coinroot CEO Dave Weisberger for insight. But first, the crypto exec also broke down why crypto stocks like Coinbase have been outperforming digital assets. I just want to start off by talking about what's going on with crypto focused stocks right now. I mean, you have Coinbase, obviously, that stock is soaring this year, despite some of the regulatory challenges they're having. But it's not just them. I mean, you have Riot Blockchain, that's up 450% so far this year. And obviously, crypto companies aren't a monolith. But broadly speaking, is this a sign that Wall Street's warming up to crypto again, in the sense that they're looking at crypto businesses? Or, or what's behind this? Well, I mean, you have to understand that that stock markets are forward looking, right? They're not looking at what is the price of Bitcoin today. What they're looking at is what could be the price in the future. And so there's two different cross currents working uh, with regard to both of those. And they're very different situations. So let's start with Coinbase. In Coinbase's case, there was a thought at the bottom that Coinbase would be out of business and that you know the US was going to regulate crypto into oblivion with Operation Choke Point and a clear intent on behalf of the extremists in, on the, of, in the Democrats, which unfortunately are somewhat in the ascendancy when it comes to, to regulation, uh, that they would put Coinbase out of business. And in fact, they sued Coinbase essentially saying, your business is illegal. Now, I would say that I think they're going to lose that. And I think that it was a terrible political and strate bad strategic backfire by forcing Coinbase to defend it the way they did. There was no way to settle when you effectively tell a company your entire business is illegal. And now between what happened with the XRP case, Coinbase's interlocutory appeal uh, that is going on, uh, it looks like the SEC got in over their head and got auras went over their skis, however you wanna look at it. Riot is something very different. Riot blockchain, in fact, most of the mining sector was beaten down to a degree where it was below enterprise value, like dramatically cheaper, because nobody thought that Bitcoin mining was going to make sense. They looked at the halvening, they looked at, at post FTX, what was going on with the price, and they're like, oh my God, Bitcoin could be going to zero. 
uh, I don't see a future value in it. Now, it's absurd. Uh, if you look at the, the various measures, and you can go on Glassnode and look at a variety of metrics, I personally like hash rate versus price. I also love number of new unique network addresses that own it. But on every one of those charts, it's up and to the right, and almost monotonically so. So it is very clear that the monetary policy of Bitcoin isn't going to put miners out of business. And then they got the added spike with ordinals. And now people are realizing you can build on the Bitcoin network, which, of course, will compensate miners in transaction fees. The reason I started this conversation on crypto stocks specifically is because I wanted to compare them to the crypto assets themselves. I mean, Bitcoin is up 80 percent this year. Ether's up 60 percent. And that's good. But it doesn't really compare to the performance we're seeing of these crypto stocks. And I, I guess I was asking what's driving that gap between crypto focused companies and the crypto assets themselves, especially when you're talking about all of this future promise, all of this upside for Bitcoin. Why are investors flocking to these ancillary assets, these crypto companies, rather than the crypto assets themselves? And is it partly because they can't have them in a brokerage account right now or they can't invest in them in traditional means? The, 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 the simple answer, and this is true in trading in all assets, is in the short run, asset prices react to liquidity, full stop. Single most important thing. That's why when the Federal Reserve was pumping liquidity in, everything went up, including and the more speculative, the better. The higher the beta, beta basically just being react, the, the, the rate of change of the of the asset to the overall market. So the more esoteric, the better it, it, it was for liquidity. Think about the liquidity that exists in the brokerage stock universe that cannot invest in Bitcoin spot. It's over 90 trillion dollars. I'm going to repeat that, 90 trillion. That's not 10 times. That is a hundred times the market cap of Bitcoin. So that brings the question of this spot Bitcoin ETF, many of these proposals that are out there. Obviously, I'm not going to ask you to read the mind of the SEC and whether they're going to approve something like this. But let's say that it does get approved. I mean, what does that mean in terms of benefits for investors on Wall Street? But also, what does it mean for Bitcoin specifically? What's the upside there for Bitcoin? Well, look. First of all, I think the SEC will approve it. I think that unless I believe Gary Gensler is intelligent, I disagree with him on many things, but I believe he is intelligent. And I think that he can honestly say, I won by approving the Bitcoin ETF now, because now, even though Bitcoin is a commodity and he has no actual jurisdiction over Bitcoin, he has achieved with both BlackRock and Fidelity's and, and I think ARC's also uh, filing, maybe several others, not just the ability for Coinbase, which is the market of sufficient size, and anybody else who's used by these ETFs to report suspicious activities and potential manipulation, but also to info share who might be doing that. And so he can credibly claim that by holding out as long as he did, he has jurisdiction to keep the markets fair and orderly. And that's a massive political win for him. On the other hand, if he doesn't approve it at this point, given the fact that, and you can check this one out, I don't know exactly the numbers. I haven't looked in the last week, but a week ago, the futures ETFs was underperforming spot Bitcoin by over 30 percent. So either if he doesn't approve it now, when he can take the political win, he's essentially be on the hook for literally hurting retail investors by approving an inferior product. And so it will be a massive political loss. Let's talk about regulation very specifically there. I mean, we've talked about it for Coinbase and obviously just there with with what's happening with spot ETFs. But also, I mean, I've, we had this huge ruling uh, between Ripple and the SEC. Can you sort of quantify what that ruling means for regulation in the U.S. or the perception of regulation in the U.S. as it stands right now? Does it provide any clarity for investors or businesses or is the U.S. still as uncertain as it was at the start of this year? Because it seems like a lot of people were cheering this ruling, but there's still a lot of work to do. Well, there is a lot of work to do. Uh, it is not as well. It depends how you define clarity. There is no regulatory clarity for what rules will happen. Uh, and what the SEC can try to do. They could play Don Quixote and tilted windmills. They basically have no chance to get an enforcement action against uh, secondary market trading of crypto. But they have an even better chance of going after issuers who might be funding their projects directly by issuing tokens uh, directly to accredited investors. Uh, because that was what the ruling said. The reality is, is tokens uh, to have, quote, non-dilutive equity capital 
basically those, if you're smart and you're running a project and you're a corporation, uh, issue equity. If you're a distributed found, you know, autonomous organization, you got a bit of a problem. Uh, because there's no clear path for funding. You would need to you know, keep it open source and reward developer and be completely open source about it. It's, it's kind of a, a middle gray area. But what is clear for at least until there's an appeal and an appeal is heard, there is really not a lot of risk to secondary trading of liquid tokens. So that does matter. But the best take, I think, is McHenry's take and Cynthia Loomis's take, which is this proves the need for Congress to act. And there's now an actively proposed bill in both houses. They're different and there's issues with both. And I've talked about that chapter and verse. But the fact of the matter is the U.S. now it's pretty clear that we need legislation in order to clarify who can create rules. And we need a regulator to be willing to engage with the industry to create rules. OK, that's all for Crypto World today, but we'll be back again tomorrow. So we'll see you then.